About a year ago, I got into 3D printing and the way that I learn stuff is by doing stuff. So I decided to try to make some practical things using it. And I used the bandsaw that I designed and built a couple of years ago as the guinea pig with varying success. One huge success was making the upper wheel. I replaced the wooden one that I made with one that's 3D printed. I also replaced the upper blade guide and that worked really well. But I also made the table and the trunnion and while the trunnion worked perfectly, the table had a little bit too much give. So I'm gonna be replacing that either with the original wood or I'm gonna make one from solid aluminum. Now, speaking of solid aluminum, I had another idea that I've been meaning to try for a bandsaw and that is to replace the belt drive with a gear drive. As you can see currently, the bandsaw is set up to drive with belt and pulleys. And the first thing I need to do is remove the motor. Then I can take the rear cover off that has the end bearing for the shaft and the inner cover, and that'll allow me to get the belt taken off and the larger pulley. And then finally, I can take the lower wheel off completely. Now over to the table saw, I've got my mini table saw sled and a piece of quarter inch thick plate aluminum that I'm gonna cut into a rough blank. And if you've been keeping up with my videos lately, you'll know that I recently built a metal cutting CNC. And this was after I rebuilt my big wood cutting CNC. And I'm gonna be using both of those in this video. The first one is the metal cutting. And as you can see here, I've got flood coolant set up. And the spindle that I have on here is actually the cordless Makita trim router. And I'm running that from battery. And these two parts that I'm making here from this smaller blank are the washers that will make the larger gear thicker, bumping it out to a full three quarters of an inch thick. And I need it that thick so that it will grip the shaft and stay true. And as you can see, the machine operates flawlessly here. And this is open on the top and nothing's splashing out. Cuts is making are perfect and the operation is smooth and steady. And the key to using battery power is to make sure that your operations are fairly short so that you don't run down the battery too much. So the next part is that big gear. That's the big blank that I cut out to begin with. And as you can see, the CNC is making short work of that as well. It's almost hypnotic standing there watching this thing perform. And the quality of cut that I'm getting from this is outstanding. Now I mentioned the big CNC and we're over to that now to make some parts from plywood. Now to lock the gears on the shaft of the lower wheel, I need to cut a keyway. And the easiest way for me to do that is to use the cordless grinder. And before I put the gear on, I've got a 3D printed spacer that will go between it and the bearing. And then the gear can go on and those two washers that will bolt directly to that gear. Then it's back down to the metal cutting CNC where I'm cutting out the small gear. And another 3D printed part here helps get everything lined up precisely. And these are the two plywood parts that I cut on the big CNC. Then I can get the bearing put in and put the liner, once again, another 3D printed part in that opening on the other side and slide in the lower wheel. 
Of course, these gears need grease, and that's the reason for that black liner, to keep the grease in there instead of soaking into the plywood. And I tap the holes in the big gear, get everything assembled the same way as I did it before, get the gear on and the key in, then the washers, and then the screws that hold it all together. And just to be on the safe side, I squeezed a bit of construction adhesive in there just to fill up any gaps. And then I put on another spacer. And then it's back to the big CNC where I'm cutting another piece of plywood, except this time I didn't have it clamped down well enough and it slipped. But that's not a big deal. I got it repositioned, tightened down properly this time and finished the cut. And I've got another piece of three quarter inch plywood here that will house the bearing. Now I can get some grease on the big gear and get that spread around. And then I can get the outer cover on, the top part anyway. And one of the drawbacks of using gears is that everything has to be a lot more precise than a belt drive. And you also have to be able to take the motor off separately. And that's the reason why the gearbox has the upper part closed while the lower part is still open. Now for the motor, it's the one that I had on my old disc sander that I made a long time ago that I stopped using because I made a smaller disc sander that I find more handy. But this is an open frame motor that is similar to what you'll find in a washing machine. And it has these rubber impregnated mounts on the ends that need to fit into these holes that I made in these plywood brackets. And then I've got another 3D printed part here. This is actually a collar for the small gear. I need to countersink the hole a little bit for the screw that I'm gonna drive in that will clamp it onto the shaft. And now I can see if it fits and whether it actually works. And I just got a cord wired onto the motor for now and I'm just holding it with my hand because I just wanna see to make sure that it actually meshes properly And it worked, and the only thing that I noticed was just how loud it was. But then I expected that. And I need to get it clamped down to put the blade tension on and see how it dries the blade. Everything is lined up just the same as it was when it was belt driven. And at this point, I wasn't sold on keeping it gear driven because of the noise, but I've used it for about two weeks in the meantime, and I think I am. So what I'm doing right now is temporary. This is all very quickly rigged up to hold that lower cover on to close the gearbox and keep the grease in. To keep the motor from turning, I made these triangular blocks that'll just glue on and then I'll fire in some pins to hold it there. After the glue dried on those, I was able to start it up. You can see that it stops the motor from twisting. I don't have to have my hand on it anymore. And I did a test cut to try it out and it works perfectly.